Hello, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Tejas. I'm the commander of the 304th Expeditionary Airlift Squadron stationed here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Our unit hails from McCord Field in Washington State. We're down here in Christchurch in support of the United States Antarctic Program, flying people and supplies to and from Antarctica. I'm going to stop back here. If you guys want to take a look at the entire plane from this angle, it is beautiful. I'm here today to give you a quick tour of the C-17, so follow me. If you take a look, we've got four Pratt & Whitney F-117 fly-by-wire turbofan engines. Each engine is capable of producing 40,000 pounds of thrust. In total, that's 160,000 pounds. And let me tell you, we're gonna need every single pound of that thrust as we often take off weighing 585,000 pounds, which is our maximum takeoff gross weight. It's the equivalent of 265,000 kilograms. It's also the equivalent of 24 fully loaded school buses. Take a moment now, check out our main landing gear. We have 12 tires for the main gear and two on the nose gear to support all of the weight of the entire aircraft. Follow me as I take you to the back of the aircraft. While we're walking, check out the height of that tail. It sits 55 feet in the air, equivalent of 17 meters tall. Take a look at the cargo door and ramp as it opens right now. One of the amazing things about the C-17 is that we're able to configure the ramp to facilitate different types of cargo we have to unload. Today, we have the toes installed. You can see them sticking up right now, but they will eventually come all the way down and touch the ground. In that configuration, we are able to drive wheeled vehicles right onto the back of the cargo compartment. We can also unload a large amount of passengers through this way as well. Additionally, we have the ability to stop the cargo ramp at a coplanar position, which will allow us to use forklifts to offload different pallets and different types of cargo. Follow me as we go inside the cargo compartment. Take a look around at the enormous size of this aircraft. I'd like for you to meet Staff Sergeant Epperson. He's the loadmaster here in the 304th, and he actually controls about 80% of this aircraft. I'd like for you to look down over here so you can check out the different ways we can configure the floor. He can use this device to pop up a rail system, which will secure the cargo in flight. Additionally, we have the ability to make this floor from a flat surface for rolling vehicles into a roller surface where we can unload different types of pallets. Thanks, Sergeant Epperson. Take a look around this cargo compartment. We have 54 sidewall seats for passengers. We also have the ability to install 48 centerline seats right down the middle. In a time of uh, need, we are able to configure this aircraft for med medical evacuations and we, we can install 48 litters. I personally have flown to all seven continents and have flown this aircraft in a variety of different situations. I personally have flown eight Humvees, a Chinook helicopter, a few Black Hawk helicopters, and I've had 18 pallets of humanitarian supplies on board for relief around the world. Now let's go up here to the front of the loadmaster station. I'd like for you to meet Master Sergeant Kelly. He's sitting at the loadmaster station and has direct access through his panel to all of the electronics in the cargo compartment. Additionally, he uses that laptop to configure uh, and calculate the aircraft weight and balance to ensure the safety of flight for all takeoffs and landings. Thanks, Sergeant Kelly. Now over here, we have the aircraft lavatory and we have the galley. Up there, we have a convection oven, a small refrigerator, some hot pots, and hot water makers. Last but not least, we have the aircraft laboratory. Now follow me up to the flight deck. Let's go up to the crew rest compartment. Up here, we're at, we have two additional seats for air crew members and sleeping quarters. The bottom bunk is for the pilots. The top bunk, when laid flat, is for the loadmasters. This area is absolutely vital 
because this aircraft is virtually unlimited on range. We have the ability to do multiple in-flight air refuelings. Well, what limits us is our crew duty day. With three pilots and two loadmasters, we are able to fly on a 24-hour duty day. Now let me take you up to the top of the aircraft. This aircraft is 174 feet long, or 53 meters. It's 170 feet wide, or 52 meters. We carry all of our fuel in our wings, and we can carry 245,000 pounds of fuel, which is 111,000 kilograms, or the equivalent of 2,300 Toyota Camrys worth of fuel. If you look on the ends of the wings, those winglets actually sit over eight feet tall, about 2.3 meters. Now let's go check out the cockpit. Welcome to the C-17 cockpit. As you can see, we use the stick as opposed to a yoke, like a lot of other traditional airlines and cargo airplanes. Additionally, we have the heads up display that allows us to fly looking outside the window as opposed to looking down at our instruments in here. The C-17 is extremely unique for a variety of reasons. First, we have the ability to take off and land on regular runways, dirt runways, and compacted snow runways like we do in Antarctica. We have the ability to take off and land on runways as short as 3,500 feet or 1,200 meters long. The other unique thing is that this aircraft is able to take off in temperatures as hot as 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 Celsius and it's temperatures as cold as minus 49 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 45 degrees Celsius. Well, thank you for coming along with me on this tour. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Take care.